Welcome to the No State Project for October 11, 2014. Coming you live from the Fortified Compound in Phoenix, Arizona. Glad to be back with you live here today on the big show. This is, of course, the No State Project where we're working to bring it about a voluntary society one show at a time. The website, of course, markstevens.net. And you can join me here on the big show today. I'm expecting some big calls here today. Uh, we've got some good news. We've got some bad news. But, uh, you know, the good news, we want to hear that too. Uh, but you can join me at 60... 218-632-9399, 218-632-9399. Also on Skype, you can reach me at Frank Rizzo 3 That's Frank Rizzo with the number 3, and then I can also put you into, if you want to join the show, we can put you on during the break, and then I can also put you into the No State Project chat, which we are up to. We were 278, but we have 277, so uh, definitely check that out, especially if you are being attacked by a bureaucrat uh, one of these government types, and you need some help prepping for court because uh, after, unfortunately, what happened to James, um, a lot of this does have to do with you've got to be a, you've got to think on your feet and you've got to be able to obviously uh, perform in front of a audience, especially a jury. Um, and if you're not good at that, uh, you may be right in everything. You may even do a decent cross-examination, uh, but it's not going to work out too well. So it's best to do a lot of role-playing. So check out the No State Project Skype chat for that. Also, I want to let everybody know it's a month away, uh, just about a month away. We've got Libertopia 2014 in San Diego. It's going to be awesome. they got quite a list of speakers there. Uh, I'm going to be there. I'll be one of the speakers. I'll be talking about journalist act, journalism activism. Also, of course, John Bush is going to join us. It'll probably be uh, when we do the show live from the, uh, the hotel there in San Diego. We'll probably have him on again. Uh, Gary Cartier, uh, Clyde Cleveland, Marlene Damon, Tony Fairman, Tom Garrett, Carla Garrick. Uh, I guess she's with the, no, the Free State Project. Uh, Andrea, Alexandra Goldbert. Ernest Hancock, there are only two types of people in the world, those who want to be left alone and those who will not leave them alone, and uh, he'll be there, of course, always good to see Ernest, and uh, well, you can just go to libertopia.org, and uh, you can check that out, that's uh, libertopia.org, I will be there, looking forward to be there, and also, it looks like we may have Calvin be there again. He was there last year, so uh, it looks pretty good. I can't say it's set in stone at this particular time, but uh, hopefully the one and only Calvin will be able to join us, and I'm uh, looking forward to that. So definitely check it out. November 13th through the 16th in San Diego. It's libertopia.org. Libertopia.org. Definitely sign up for that. Don't know for sure. Uh, I have a couple things here, a couple people that I was trying to, you know, not, not too good with a contact. Uh, but we're hoping to have a blues jazz jam, just uh, some, some stuff that we're going to do, some improv there. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. So hopefully the drummer and another guitar player will be there, and I can bring my guitar and bass. So that... Uh, uh, that that will be awesome. So definitely looking forward to that. And what I want to do here today on the big show, what I'm going to do uh, here on the big show today is, uh, and this is going to be an article, go with an article, and I know that listening to the live show here on LRN.FM, you're not going to necessarily see the document, but that will all be linked up in the article, uh, available at markstevens.net. I'll do my best to get that later today. Uh, if not, it will be Monday, but... Thanks to Calvin, we will, uh, of course, have the podcast, the entire podcast, um, on uh, markstevens.net. So uh, what I want to do is address, especially since went through with James in Alaska, uh, that is still uh, quite something, and hopefully uh, we can get a uh, motion for judgment notwithstanding the verdict, because if you listened to the podcast last week of the No State Project, you know it was as bad as you could hope. Uh, the fact that you could have four of the first six witnesses perjure themselves multiple times uh, in the first two minutes of the cross-examination uh, should have been enough for the jury to say, ooh, yeah, uh, perjury? We're going to have to convict this guy of perjury and the witnesses are perjuring themselves? And it looks to me like the prosecution may have suborned perjury? Uh, yeah, that should have been enough. So what I want to do in this video, in this article, it's called Common Judicial Lies. Yes, <laughs> judges lie all the time. 
chances are if a judge's lips are moving, he's lying. And that, that really uh, – any politician, bureaucrat uh, – lawyer, uh, if they're talking, if they're communicating to you in some way, they are lying. And uh, if there's any truth that actually gets in there, like I say all the time, like when you're physically in court under attack, if any truth actually comes out, you could be safe in assuming that or knowing that it is completely irrelevant to the actual charge. Um, something that came up in spades many, many times with uh, James's uh, pretended trial. Uh, so, of course, uh, let's go. Common judicial lies, yes, judges lie all the time. And uh, so one of the things I believe what we need to do to get to a, a volunteer society and what we do here on the show is to relentlessly attack the false presumption of legitimacy people called government still happen to enjoy. I mean, the reason why the jury showed up is because they – not just because they were threatened, but because they still hold some kind of uh, legitimacy or perception of legitimacy that people say, well, it's, it's, it's okay for the judge to commit assault and false imprisonment because he's the judge and the rules don't apply to him. So we're going to excuse that. And uh, we know that we can perjure ourselves, and as long as it makes the government look good, they're not going to prosecute us. They're just going to prosecute this guy who decided not to you know, submit to the threats anymore. So, uh, of course, as long as enough people believe that there's some kind of moral authority, then they're going to continue to exploit that and forcing us to give the money. That's why I want to address two common lies told by lawyers in, this, in, the, in the next segment, uh, and judges in particular. One, that jurisdiction is a trial issue. And number two... Jurisdiction is an issue of law, not fact. Now, if you're attacked and you got to go to court, you know, you, you're going to challenge jurisdiction, and you should, and anyone who tells you, oh, don't challenge jurisdiction, that's kind of stupid, uh, they're lying to you. Challenging jurisdiction should be the first thing you do. Uh, they, their entire, the, the entire basis of their attack against you is going to be this presumption, this argument that if you're physically in Arizona, then the constitutional laws apply, and we have the right to beat the shit out of you and do whatever we want uh, with impunity. It's called immunity that they're able to do that. So attack that particular presumption because everything is stacked on top of that. And uh, anyone, again, anyone says, all right, you really shouldn't do that, they, uh, you know, just, just smile and wave, smile and wave, boys. Just walk away from them because they don't have your best interest first. So you're going to hear, when you go to court, you're going to hear one or more of these lies, very, very common. And, and what you should notice right away is that there's a pretty serious contradiction with these two lies. See, if jurisdiction is just an issue of law, then why do the judges always insist that it's a trial issue? You don't, you don't settle issues of law at trial. You settle issues of fact at trial. So, you know, yeah, they're liars, but they're not very good liars. Again, every single thing coming out of their mouth is a lie, so that's, that's easy. To, it's easy. All right, so you get to court. You're there for the initial appearance. Remember, you're forced to appear or a warrant for your arrest will be issued authorizing the use of deadly force to get you in there. Now, the judge is under the impression that the prosecutor has already presented evidence to support his argument the court has jurisdiction. If not, then why is he forcing you to appear at a, an arraignment or initial appearance? Uh, you know, it's a, why would he issue a death warrant if he didn't believe he had jurisdiction and the jurisdiction is the burden of the prosecutor. That's right. So he's under the assumption that the prosecutor has presented this evidence. So you challenge jurisdiction saying, has the prosecution presented any facts to support his argument that the court has any jurisdiction over me? Now the judge typically is going to refuse to answer saying that this is an arraignment we're only taking pleas. He may lie, which of course that's what they do, insisting that he has jurisdiction and enter a plea for you, again lying that you are refusing to plea and over your objection. Uh, most likely when you ask for the facts proving jurisdiction, the judge will say, Young man, jurisdiction is a trial issue. Now, it, this, is, this is such... It, I'm going to break this down, um, and we'll finish this. You know, We'll pick it up in the next segment if we're cut off. Uh, typically what will happen is the judge will good cop you, and he'll say things like, So, but sir, it's a trial issue, but you have every right every constitutional substantive due process right to challenge the prosecution's arguments at trial. Not true. It is a lie. And we're going to go through and show from the psychopath's own mouth that it is a lie. And uh, we'll do that next segment. My name is Mark Stevens. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Which you can get at 
markstevens.net. And I want to welcome everyone back. Appreciate everyone tuning into the big live show here today on LRN.FM. That's the Liberty Radio Network. And I just mentioned I didn't have the location for the Libertopia next month, but it is a town and country uh, resort hotel in San Diego, and you can get the information for that at libertopia.org. And uh, of course, you want to join the big show today, 218 632 9399, 218 632 9399, and of course, Frank Rizzo 3 on Skype. And I just want to point out that I, may, I saw something today on the website, a critic saying that you could not register anymore to post on the forum. That is not true. Uh, I did post a, uh, so, a sticky. On the forum, that if you want to have a, an account on the forum, to the only way that I could deal with the spam bots, because I was getting flooded with them, anybody who has a forum is going to get that. I just couldn't seem to get the plugins going to stop it. So I was, you know, I was getting 50, 60 or more a morning, and so it was just taking too much time to, uh, to do. So what I did was uh, I shut it down as far as registration, so all registrations have to go through me, but everyone gets approved. If you contact me at markstevens at mail.com and you want, just give me a username and I'll approve it. I create the account and this way I know it's, it's a human being. It's not a spam bot. That's, that's the only thing. There's nothing nefarious behind that. I do a live broadcast and I'm not trying to shut out any kind of criticism. Uh, so uh, if you're having trouble registering, email me at markstevens at mail.com. But let's get back that uh, common judicial lies because judges lie all the time, and that's the th- you know I was mentioning that jurisdiction's a trial issue. This is a lie. This is uh, completely false. Um, it, it, there's absolutely no merit to this whatsoever, whether it's civil, criminal, traffic, or otherwise. There's absolutely no merit to this. It is a lie. And the first word out of your mouth when they lie is should be objection. That is not true, and you know it. So let's go through a bit about this. Uh, we already know that in, in the bureaucrats and the politicians, the psychopaths and their little circus there, they'll admit this, that jurisdiction, from the moment it's asserted against you, is subject to challenge. And let's not forget jurisdiction is not something that just the courts have to have. The, 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 uh, the executive branch, uh, so-called, the police have to have jurisdiction to do an investigation and to, and to do a stop. Uh, so it's not as if it's something like, it's just a trial. No, the cop on the street, or the bureaucrat in, in from the zoning department, or the 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 uh, the psychopaths with the machine guns for the health department when they go after the Amish with you know for raw milk, they have to have jurisdiction too. So that alone shows that jurisdiction being a trial issue, complete horse crap. It, it's just another judicial lie. Yes, judges lie all the time. Get used to it. Um, so. The reason why they're lying against you is one of the main reasons why we use the unsigned plea of guilty, because it cuts through all the lies that jurisdiction's a trial issue. You're standing there, they're forcing you, they must be on the impression. 